Hello, thanks very much for clicking on the video link. Welcome to another series of idle chat for the American Bar Association's Section for Dispute Resolution. Today I'm having an absolute blast talking to an old friend, and when I say old, I mean like two and a half decades ago we started working together in the ADR industry. This is Leonard Levy. Hi, Len. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing, Natalie? I'm doing really well. I'm so happy to chat with you. Same here. So Len, Idle Chat is really truly that. So I've got about 120 uh, completely innocuous questions here. And so we'll give the cards a quick shuffle and start our Idle Chat. This is just for fun. This is not cutting edge journalism at all, not even close. All right. Lynn, our first absolutely not in-depth question is, which do you prefer, mayonnaise or Miracle Whip? Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Absolutely fair. And you, you like mayonnaise all the time, Miracle Whip never, 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 or mayonnaise in some cases, Miracle Whip in others? I... I, I tend to go with the more natural product or what I perceive to be the more natural product. Um, mayonnaise, the, the, one, the one time I really hesitate to use mayonnaise at all, though, I, as a matter of fact, I won't, is on French fries. I will not do that. <laughs> Sorry to all the Canadians who are watching. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bor borrowing a phrase from uh, borrowing a, a thought from Pulp Fiction, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all have to have our priorities. Got to set the line somewhere. Right. French fries. All right. Uh, Len, how many hours per day do you think you spend online? Well, the, the accurate answer is way too many. I probably spend between five probably five to six hours uh, online in, in one form or another, either emails or uh, doing research or uh, writing articles. And uh, that's, th the writing articles part is, is the part that, uh, that takes, takes the most time, I think. Right, right. We're all online a lot, especially during the pandemic. It seems to have doubled nearly. Not to mention, by the way, Zoom mediation and Zoom teaching, which, which does consume some time too. It does. I'd say the, the bulk of my time is spent online now. Uh, Len, what is the most interesting building that you've either seen or actually had the privilege of being inside? Wow, the most interesting building. Hmm. I would have to say the Sears Tower in Chicago. And the reason was that it gave me the opportunity to do something that scares the living daylights out of me. And that is to stand in a plexiglass enclosure with the, the plexiglass below your feet as well, so that you are suspended a hundred stories or more above the street. That one, just thinking about it, makes my palms sweat. But that, for that reason, was a very interesting building. <laughs> you know, I have the utmost faith in engineers, and I'm still going to go ahead and take a hard pass. That just, <laughs> that, that just sounds like, no, no thanks. <laughs> no, good for you. I'm so glad you were able to, you know, get up there and walk on it and look at, look down, right. you know, right. all, all, all the power to you, but oh man, I don't think that's for me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Now, Len, I know for uh, a fact that you're a big fan of books and reading and knowledge and research, etc. but what's your favorite medium? Are you an ebook, a paperback, a hardback? What, what's your... What's your I, preference? I, I like I like hardcover books. I I uh, I really prefer. I mean, soft cover is fine too. But there's something about a a new book 
that has just come out that that gives you and it doesn't matter what type of book it doesn't have to be it can be fiction it could be a book in the mediation world it could be any but it there's something about a hardcover book it's like somebody has put effort not just to write this book but to get this book into a form that is lasting and uh, that's that's what i prefer hardcover books hardcover all right good to know now i know what to send you <laughs> all right len what was the best thing that has happened to you today the best thing that happened to me today was I think our conversation, Natalie, to be quite honest with you, just uh, being able to catch up and learn about the cultural uh, differences in France and uh, between France and the United States. And, to, and that, that actually is the best thing that's happened to me today. Thank Gosh. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. true, that's true very answer. sweet. All true right. Answer. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. I have to say it's it's the best thing that's happened to me today as well. So I like Thank that. You. Thank you. Connect, connecting with old friends is always a good thing. Right. Oh, now here's one, Len. I don't know. I you can answer it or not. What do you like most about yourself? Ooh. You know that's that's a go against the grain question because I. I really find that I'm not comfortable talking about myself per se. I, I enjoy talking about my experiences, but I think I, I think if if I were to to directly answer that question, it is that I feel I can connect with virtually anyone who has any willingness to connect with me. Do you know, I was going to say the exact same thing about you. <laughs> what I like most about you is that you're willing to have a, a true dialogue, a sincere, authentic give and take with anyone. And, and I find that to be an admirable quality. Thank you. I like that about you too. All right. Len, if you have a secret talent, what is it? Okay, well, that one actually is pretty easy. Um, my secret talent is that I know how to sound the shofar on the Jewish high holidays, um, and also that I can play tunes on the shofar. Uh, I have entertained friends and relatives at birthdays by playing happy birthday to them on the show floor. <laughs> I would pay good money to see that. And I've got a birthday coming up. Uh, you're hired, my friend. Okay, you've got it. <laughs> you're, you're hired. All right. Len, uh, who is your favorite cartoon or comic book character? Well, let's see. Cartoon or comic book character? I would have to say that Superman, because Superman, Superman is is really someone who has had to get things under control. He was born with he was born with superpowers. Well, he was not when he was on the his his planet of krypton but when he came to the world he had superpowers and his entire life was learning to be responsible with those superpowers as opposed to uh figuring out uh like so many people who who you know so many of the characters that have come up uh figuring out um how to do things with the superpowers. There, there's a control element there that a self-control element. And I think that's an admirable quality in, uh, in Superman. Uh, uh, 
I, I, I'll be on Team Superman. I'm, I'm a big fan. Big fan. I like that one. Uh, Len, what outdoor activity haven't you tried yet, but you would like to? Ooh, well, let's see. At, at, at my age, <laughs> at my age, the, uh, the, the outdoor activities, uh, things like rock climbing, things of that nature, um, that, that's not going to happen. Um, the outdoor activity, I think that I would like, that, that I have tried once, actually, but I, I would like to try again, is surfing. I'd like, I would really like to surf. Not, I don't need 100 foot waves. I just want to stand up on a board and ride it in. <laughs> You know, you're in LA. I I hear that I you know. know surfing is maybe a, a thing there, and you could you could give it a shot. I, I've heard that. Yes, I've heard that too. Yes. <laughs> of course, it could be just rumor. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Len, can you do the Vulcan hand greeting? I can. Look at that. All right. Okay. Way to go, recessive genes. <laughs> All right. But by the way, I will tell you something about the Vulcan hand gesture, which, which uh, Leonard Nimoy uh, actually came up with. It is a variation on a, um, on a Jewish blessing. And um, I, I, I'm sorry, but I don't remember the, the blessing, but I think it might be the uh, a part of the Yivarechacha, which is a, a may the Lord bless you and keep you and and keep you safe. And uh, I think that's that's where that came from. I had no idea, but that would that would be uh, right on line with what I know about Leonard, Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, and live long and prosper. Right. It's a nice paraphrase of the Jewish prayer. Right. Yeah. We uh, we were in uh, Froman's in Santa Monica mm -hmm. a million years ago, uh, 25 years ago, maybe. And mm -hmm. Leonard Nimoy and his son sat down in the booth right behind us. And my daughter, who was really little at the time, said far too loudly, mommy, that's Leonard Nimoy. She said, do you think he knows who he is? <laughs> And Leonard Nimoy, to his great credit, really slowly, I felt the booth move behind me, turned around, and his arm was on the, the back of the booth, and he whispered back, and he said, I do, and I had so much fun becoming me, and she, her eyes got really big, and he stopped and talked to her and answered all of her questions, and he was just lovely, absolutely lovely. And the better part of that whole interaction was the pride on his son's face at this, this interaction between his dad and a, a little girl, just a little girl in, you know, Jewish deli. Right. And he was so pleased that his father was that guy, you know, he was, he that was just, he was just a mensch, just a good guy. That is uh, so that, yeah, that interaction stayed with us for, you know, all these years. And she was really sad when he passed away. And she called and said, Mommy, do you remember that time in Froman's Deli? And, yeah, <laughs> I do. Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, he's a good guy. Right. All right. Um, Len, is there anything that you can think of that everyone on the planet might be able to agree about? I think that, and, and I, it, this, this may be, this may not be accurate, but everyone can agree that, that their families are important and the most important thing and being able to benefit your family is, um, is the highest priority. Now, I say that everyone 
can agree on that, but there are those, unfortunately, who wouldn't necessarily agree up to that for a variety yeah. of reasons. Yeah, or for whatever reason, can't actually fulfill it. But I think you're right. That's a really lovely sentiment too. All right, Len, last question in the idle chat. Um, tell me about your, your work. Tell me what you love most about the resolution industry. Tell me about, because I, I know that you're, you're passionate about um, the resolution industry. Tell me a little bit about, about why or what's the, the drive? What's the, the great appeal? The great appeal to me about, uh, about mediating cases is that it provides an opportunity to for, for people to truly resolve conflict, to put, to put things that are toxic in their life behind them, and to realize, and they may not realize before going into the mediation, uh, mediation session, what they, what their true interests are. Uh, there are, there are situations, um, and the, and, and many mediators will approach things as so long as I can settle the lawsuit. That's what we, that's what we're striving for. But I think we're striving for more. I think we're really striving to resolve conflict. And that is beyond settling the lawsuit. And, and I'll, give you, I'll give you a quick example. Um, I mediated a case a uh, number of years ago uh, involving two songwriters. And the, the songwriters had, a, uh, had written a, uh, a theme for a TV show that, had, that was very successful for many years, had gone off the air, uh, they had a disagreement about various things, uh, supposedly didn't like each other, uh, and, and their group had sp split apart. And there was nothing really to argue about until the, song, uh, until the TV show was picked up on syndication. And then they had these royalties to fight about. Okay, So we, we mediated, and we spent the day, and for not a lot of money involved uh, in, in resolving the lawsuit. Nobody left after the mediation was over. And it was, that's curious because people generally, let, we settle it by. And sensing that there might be something else, I asked one of the parties if, when the last time was that he had spoken to uh, his former partner. And the attorney nearly jumped out of, out of his chair uh, it's, it's saying, these guys can't be together. It'll be terrible. And um, I said, well, let, let's, would you like to talk to him if he's willing to? And we did. Uh, he said yes. And, and so I set up um, uh, and, and went, did the same conversation in the other room. The two of them got together. They stood and this is just with me and the, the two of them in the room, they looked at each other, didn't say a word, and then hugged. And as I left the room, they were talking about having a barbecue and, and getting their families together and things of that nature. That to me is resolution. And if we can, if we can, uh, we can achieve that, we can actually enrich lives beyond just getting rid of the lawsuit, which of course has great value, but, but getting it truly behind them is really, I think, what we need to strive for. Wow, yeah, and that is a real gift, isn't it? That's, um, yeah, that's really valuable stuff. Well, Len, it has been an absolute, I mean, a real pleasure for me to idly chat with you. I love talking to you about all of these different kinds of fascinating things, but for idle chat, I want to just say thank you so much, and I look forward to staying in touch. Thank you, Natalie. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you, to catch up with you, and uh, 
do we'll we'll do this more we, we have to Thank you take you. care have a great day